to go hand in hand. Fitness, health, beauty, and longevity. You nail those four strategies, which you're going to learn in this quest, and you've got your bases covered. But the fact is, if you're just pursuing fitness without considering these others, you're gonna miss out on some variables. And if you're just pursuing health and beauty and longevity without focusing on fitness, you're also gonna leave a lot on the table when it right. comes to looking, feeling, and performing the way that a human being was meant to. And, and what happens is that a lot of people enrolled in these exercise programs that suggest that they exercise for 30 minutes to an hour every single day, but it only covers fitness, doesn't cover beauty, doesn't cover health, doesn't cover longevity. And so really, when you look at it from, that, from those small pillars, this is a lifestyle change. Let me give you a concrete example of that. There are many people who are fit with horrible posture, right? They have, for example, that mitochondrial density that we were talking about. And maybe they've got a decent amount of muscle, but they're, they're hunched over, their right shoulder's higher than their left, they take their shirt off and their body looks just a little bit not put together. Uh, and the idea behind that is they haven't incorporated an element of this program that's a key element of this program and that's mobility actually treating your soft tissue in a manner that enhances your symmetry and the way that your body appears the way that you stand the way that you move the way that you walk and so that's a perfect example of how you could have fitness but have the absence of beauty another perfect example would be someone who decides that they're going to attain their fitness through long chronic cardio sessions you're gonna go for a long lunchtime run or a that huge morning bike ride or the weekend death march slog we see so many marathoners doing now don't get me wrong if your goal is to climb your own personal Mount Everest and that is say an Ironman triathlon, right? You're probably gonna have to go out and do a little bit more endurance than what might be considered to be ancestral or natural or even, dare I say, healthy. But the idea is that when you're doing all this chronic cardio, you can actually increase arterial stiffness. You can increase risk of cardiovascular disease. We see some people dropping dead during triathlons and marathons because they have not paired their fitness with the consideration of longevity and health. Right, so the, the takeaway message here is that you need to have a balanced approach, and that's why we've included all four strategies in this quest, fitness, health, beauty, and longevity. So Ben, that brings us to big line number five, right? Which is where people think that just because I do yoga, I'm good, I'm gonna be healthy. But in reality, there are five categories of fitness that we need to look at. Now, the quest that we're developing covers all five, but let's share that five with everyone. Right, you look, at, you look at human physiology, and if we're just doing yoga, we'll have flexibility and some amount of mobility. If we're just doing high intensity interval training, we'll have some amount of stamina, we'll have some amount of, of mitochondrial density and some amount of oxygen utilization. If we're just doing strength training, we're gonna have some amount of muscle and some amount of strength and some amount of power. But if we're only doing each of those activities by themselves, we're gonna be very unbalanced when it comes to what it takes for complete fitness, when it comes to complete physiology. Now, my formal training is exercise physiology. My master's degree is in exercise physiology and biomechanics. And so for this quest, what I did was I identified the five specific parameters of fitness that you must engage in if you want that complete balanced approach to fitness and you also want to maintain your health, your beauty, and your longevity. So the way that we've, we've chunked these, these fitness categories up is you have your strength, and your muscle mass, right? This is, as you would kind of logically conclude, strength and muscle mass is things like, you know, moving heavy things. So next we have muscular endurance and anaerobic capacity. That's your ability to do what I alluded to earlier, build that mitochondrial density, build your, your cardiovascular fitness. Uh, we have stamina, or the ability to simply be able to move for long periods and of that's time. that's cardio. Right, it's, it's essentially your, your endurance, your, your cardiovascular health, and it, it kind of is something that confuses a lot of people when you make that distinction between the, the higher intensity cardio training and the lower intensity cardio training. The former builds all that mitochondria and the lungs that you want for climbing a set of stairs. The latter, that cardiovascular endurance, allows you to go on that beautiful hike that you want to go on, or, or a bike ride by the sea. The next would be your metabolic efficiency. This is your ability through low level physical activity spread throughout the day and through some of the strategies that we incorporate in this program, you know, uh, uh, morning fat loss sessions, the ability to be able to turn your body into a fat burning machine, the ability to be able to train your body to utilize fatty acids as a fuel by engaging in fat burning all throughout the day. And then the final component is mobility and recovery. Right, your ability to be able to actually build that symmetry that I was talking about and be able to recover, to feel good, to not be super sore after you've engaged in other elements such as the strength and the muscle mass or the high intensity interval training. Amazing, so just in those few short minutes we've learned so much. So I'm gonna recap for everyone here, okay? So the first 
the first thing you want to understand, the first big lie you want to get rid of is this. We think it's impossible to maintain our fitness in our older years, but the answer is we absolutely need to focus on maintaining our health and fitness as we get older. Number two, if you're elderly, it doesn't mean that you're exempt from exercise. You absolutely need the right exercise to prevent muscle loss. Number three, you do not need to spend hours and hours and hours in the gym. The best exercise is often done in small doses. Number four, you will look good and feel your best when you're fit. Number five, is that there are five categories of fitness that we have to look at. And it's not about just nailing your yoga practice. There's a diversity of different practices that you need to bring in. So even if you stop here and choose not to go on with this masterclass or not to take part in our new program at Ben Greenfield, you've already gained five new ideas on how to view health and fitness. And these ideas hopefully will change the way you see life. For example, there's just that idea that it is our responsibility to stay fit even into our later years, completely transformed me. When I rolled into 40, I was not in the best shape. But by 42, after I started getting acquainted with Ben Greenfield's work, with Wild Fit, with um, John Butcher as an inspiration, I'm now actually seven kilograms lighter than I was at 40, belly fat completely gone, and I'm at the fittest level in my life. My 42-year-old self right now can probably outrun my 25-year-old self. But a lot of it has to do with that mental model shift. So hopefully you're going to experience that too. But now we want to actually give you some practical systems that you can bring into your life immediately this week that will help move you towards a new level of health and fitness. Ben. So the fact is that there's four key behavioral strategies that are part of this quest. You've got your fitness, right? Uh, and, and we already talked about how too many people are walking into the gym and beating themselves up for hours in some cases and walking out bedraggled and sore and hangry and everything else that goes along with too much fitness. There are actually four strategies. Fitness is just one. You also have health, longevity, and beauty, right? You want, you want to be a healthy, robust person. You want to live a long time and you, you want to look good. So the idea is that we've woven in to this quest 10 different strategies that you use to tackle each of those parameters. Strategies like mobility and recovery and stamina. But what I want to share with you today are just, just two of those strategies that give you a lot of bang for your buck. I mean, if, if you weren't to do any other part of this quest and you were just to do these two strategies, you're going to move the dial quite a bit. So the first is metabolic efficiency. Metabolic efficiency. This is, as I alluded to earlier, your ability to turn your body into a fat burning machine. So the idea, this is very, very simple. It's a strategy I've used for, for years to stay very lean year round. You start off with waking up in a fasted state, meaning rather than waking up and, and having a huge mess of scrambled eggs or a giant smoothie with 10 pears and two bananas and an apple, you instead wake up fasted. And after the first several days that you do this, it's, it's just easy as cake to wake up. Probably a poor analogy, easy as cake, but it's, it's super <laughs> easy to, to wake up and not eat. Okay. So wake up, you don't eat. Don't worry. You can still have that breakfast that you crave or the, the big cup of coffee with all your superfoods in it or, or whatever else it is that, that you like to have for breakfast. This isn't a breakfast skipping program. 